Okay, okay, buddy. So we are in basic settings. In the previous class, we have completed account groups. Step number 3.3, .3, we have completed in the previous class. Now, step number 3.4, define retained earnings account. So first I will explain what is the concept of retained earnings account. One second, let me close all other materials. Yes, Gadi. So, first I will explain what is the concept of return earnings account. See, retained earnings account. While creating the expenses accounts and incomes accounts, we have to specify the profit loss account type. That's why it is compulsory to create one retained earnings account. We can define any number of profit loss account types. For example, operating profit and loss account to know the operating profit and non-operating profit and loss account to know the non-operating profit or loss. At the end of the year, the balances in these profit and loss accounts will be taken to the balance sheet. Means, here we create some number of GL accounts. Among them, there are exp some expense accounts and some income accounts. But at the time of creating the income accounts and expense accounts, you may have to specify the profit loss account type. Like, whether that GL account is related to operating profit and loss account or whether that GL account is related to non-operating profit or loss. So, if the requirement is to display operating profit separately and non-operating profit separately, then we have to define two profit loss account types. If necessary, we can define any number of profit loss account types. But minimum there should be one profit loss account type. If you don't create the profit loss account type later on, you cannot create the GL account master records. Suppose you have created two profit loss account types, operating profit loss account and non-operating profit loss account. Operating profit loss account and non-operating profit loss account. Then the balance in these two profit loss account types will be transferred to balance sheet at the end of the year. So first let us do the step, then again I will explain. May know who is this just now joined as ASH? Ash. May know who is this? May know who is this ASH? Ash. One second. Yeah, may know is this Ash? Okay. So first let us define the retained earnings account. Then we will see the other things relating to retained earnings account. Transaction code. OB13. Sorry, OB53. Transaction code OB53. Slash and OB53. Chart of accounts is equal to double three double six. Chart of accounts is equal to double three double six. Click on enter. PNL statement account type is equal to EX. We can give any identification. X just like that I'm giving X. The account is 100 100. The account is 100 100. So why I have given the account number 100 100? See, 
the balance in the P&L account is displayed on the liability side of the balance sheet under the heading resources and surpluses. See, the balance in the P&L account is displayed on the liability side under the heading resources and surpluses. So, this account is to be created under the account group resources and surpluses. So, for this resources and surpluses account group, we have defined the number ranges 100, 100 to 100, 199. That's why I have taken this 100, 100 now. That is the reason. But technically speaking, you can take any number between these two numbers. Click on save. And this is called warning message. See, account 100, 100 not created in the chart of accounts, double three, double six. It is called warning message. Actually, we have given the GL account number only here. We did not create the GL account. That's why it is giving this warning message. The GL account is created later on in the general ledger accounting. But for the time being, it is only a warning message, right? So you can just ignore it. To ignore the warning message, I told you to click on enter button. Now, here I told you that based on the client requirement, we can create any number of profit loss account types. Why? Let us take one example. See, for example, in the balance sheet, we have to display operating profit separately and non-operating profit separately. So how do we derive operating profit and how do we derive non-operating profit? We have to maintain two profit loss account types. So to derive the operating profit loss account, we have to maintain one GL account, operating profit loss account. Let us say this is type PX. So this is 100. Then we have to define one more GL account, non-operating profit loss account. Let us say this is type Y and this number is 100101. So we define two profit loss account types. But what is operating profit and what is non-operating profit? Here, operating profit or loss, it is the difference between operating revenues and operating expenses. Operating revenues means again, these are the revenues generated from the main business operations of the company. Example, sales. So sales revenue is always called operating revenues. Then operating expenses. These are the expenses which are incurred to run the main business like rent, wages, salaries, etc, etc. So all the expenses which are incurred to run your business are called operating expenses. So the difference between operating revenues and operating expenses is called operating profit or loss. Then coming to non-operating profit or loss. It is the difference between non-operating revenues and non-operating expenses. Again, what is the non-operating revenue? Okay, okay, Ash. Okay, okay. Okay, no problem. You continue in this class, okay? You listen to this class, then we will see. Now, yeah. So non-operating profit or loss. It is the difference between non-operating revenues and non-operating expenses. Now, non-operating revenues means these are the revenues generated from the business operations which are not related to main business. Example, dividend on shares if the main business is textiles manufacturing. Here, our main business is, we are in the textiles manufacturing. So, we produce the textile products, we sell them. Then we get some revenue that is called sales revenue. So this is operating revenue. Now, this year we are having some surplus funds. So instead of keeping these surplus funds in the bank account, we have invested in the shares of other companies. Then at the end of the year, that other company has declared the dividend. This is called non-operating revenue because your main business is not making the investments in other companies. Your main business is textiles manufacturing. But because we are having some surplus funds, you invest in the shares of other companies. So you receive some revenue. That is the non-operating revenue. But 
if your main business itself is making the investments in other companies, yours is an investment company, then the dividend income will be operating revenue. That's how you have to decide whether the revenue is operating or non-operating. So if the revenue is related to main business, that is operating, otherwise non-operating. Then non-operating expenses. So these are the expenses incurred to earn non-operating revenues. Example, brokerage paid on purchase of shares. So in order to purchase the shares, you paid some commission to the stock exchange member. So that is called non-operating expenses. Now, whether it is a operating expenses, operating revenues or non-operating expenses, non-operating revenues, we have to maintain the ledger accounts now. So at the time of creating the GL accounts, when you are creating the GL account salaries account, you specify type X. When you are creating the GL account rent account, you specify type X again. When you create the GL account wages, you specify type X. When you create the sales account, you specify type X. Means like this, for all the operating expenses and operating revenue accounts, you enter type X. Then at the end of the year, the balances in these GL accounts will be transferred to type X. What is type X? Operating profit and loss account. So the difference will be either operating profit or operating loss. Similarly, when you create, <coughs> sorry, similarly, when you create dividend and shares account, you enter type Y, you specify type Y. Then when you create the brokerage and shares account, you enter type Y. So what is type Y? Non-operating profit loss account. So at the end of the year, the balances in these two GL accounts will be transferred to type Y, which means non-operating profit loss account then the difference will be either non-opting profit or non-opting loss. That's how with the help of the multiple PNL account types, we can meet the requirement of the client to display operating profit separately and non-opting profit separately. Let us take one more example. Just an assumption. We have to display trading profit separately, operating profit separately, non-opting profit separately. In that case, we maintain three profit loss account types. Trading profit, trading profit, trading account, type X. Operating profit loss account, type Y. Non-operating profit loss account, type Z, type Z. Here, I am using XYZ just like that. You can use any identification. But minimum to minimum, we have to define one profit loss account type. This is what you have done. Suppose, if you want to define type Y also, how to do that? Very simple. In the same screen, here in the same screen, type Y, account is 100101. Even if it's a non-operating profit and loss, it is also part of your resource and surpluses. So click on save. Ignore the message. So in our training class, we defined two profit loss account types. Its effect I will show you at the time of creating the GL accounts. So this is the concept of retained earnings account. Now, if you see the material, posting pretty variant. So what is the posting pretty variant? First, let us try to understand. See, the posting prints are defined in the fiscal year variant. If you remember, in the fiscal year variant, you defined that normal posting periods are 12 and the special posting periods are 4. So to prevent documents from being posted to wrong posting periods, desired periods can be closed. Usually the current posting period is open and all other posting periods are closed. Means here in SAP, we have the functionality that we can post the business transactions into those periods which are opened for postings. See,
See, for example, in the fiscal year variant, right, we defined that. Yeah, Jerisha, I mean, yeah, Himasalija, tell me. Sir. Your voice is big. Sir. Yeah, Jerisha. Yeah, could you please go slowly, sir? Could you please explain slowly? Okay, okay. Okay. Now, see, in the fiscal year variant, we defined that normal periods are 12. Then, special periods are 4. So, normal periods 12 means one to 12. Okay. Then, four special periods means 13, 14, 15, 16. So, these are the special periods we have defined. Now, out of these 12 normal periods and the four special periods in SAP, we can define any number of periods opened for postings. Because in SAP, we can post the business transactions only those posting periods which are opened for postings. Technically speaking, we can open all the 12 normal periods and all the four special periods at a time. But we never do that. Generally, what we do is we open only the current period and all other periods are closed. So we are using calendar year as fiscal year, right? So according to the calendar year, fiscal year, October is 10th period, right? So in that case, 1 to 9 are closed, only 10 is open and 11 and 12 are closed. 1 to 9 are closed and 11 to 12 are also closed. Only 10th period is opened. So in that case, we can post the user, can post the business transactions only in the 10th period. What is the advantage of this? At the time of posting every business transaction, the user has to enter a period, uh, the user has to enter the date. For example, today date is, in India I am talking, 6 10, 2017. It is the Indian format date, date, month, year. So in India, 6 10, 2017 is the date. So today I am posting one transaction. So I have to give this date, 6 10, 2017. But by mistake, I have given 6 9, 2017. In that case, system immediately throws error because ninth period is closed. So whenever I see the error, then I can know the reason. Oh, I have entered wrong date. So I will rectify the date. Then it is posted. That's how using the posting period variant, we can ensure that the business transactions are posted into correct posting periods. That is the advantage of the posting period variant. Now, one more thing is, we are in October, but I have forgotten to post some transactions in the month of July. Just now only I came to know. Then what, what to do? We can open the July period, which was closed. We can post the transaction. Again, we can close it. So we can open the closed periods also. If you want to post any transactions, then again, after posting the transactions, we can close the period. But to open the closed period as a lower level employee, as an accountant, I don't have the authorization. Generally, the authorization to open the closed period is given to some higher level employee, for example, manager finance. So as an accountant, I have to put one request to my manager finance, requesting him, sir, open the July period. It's not just giving the request. I have to give the reason why I'm requesting him to open the closed period. Then I have to say that, sir, I have forgotten to post the some transactions in the month of July. So here, what is happening again? I am also made automatically accountable for my own mistakes. That is the another advantage of posting period variant. So in short, in the posting period variant, we define how many number of normal periods are opened for postings and how many number of special periods are opened for adjustments. Now, generally, we open only the current period. 
and all other periods are closed. Technically, it is possible to open all the periods, but we never do that. And the periods are opened by specifying the range. Range means from period and to period. By specifying the range, we can open the periods. And at the end of the fiscal year, in addition to normal posting periods, the special periods are to be opened for the purpose of adjustments. So, this is the concept of posting period variant. See, the following activities are involved in the maintenance of posting period variant. Number one, define the posting period variant. Means, first we have to define the posting period variant. Then, assign the posting period variant to the company code. Then, we have to open and close the posting periods. So, we have to perform these three activities to open the periods. Now, see the first step in the material. Step number 4.1. Definition of posting period variant. Path is SPRO Financial Accounting Yeah, every month we have to open the period Gadi. As a part of month end activities, right, we open the next period. I will explain you. At the time of doing the setting, I will explain you. Yeah, the special posting periods are opened at the end of the fiscal year. Akila, the special periods are opened at the end of the fiscal year. They are not opened during the fiscal year. Yeah. So, path is SPRO, financial accounting, financial accounting global settings, document, posting periods, Define variants for open posting periods. Transaction code is not there. Please add the transaction code there. OBBO. For the step number 4.1. Transaction code is OBBO. Click on new entries. Variant is equal to give some name. Let us use our company code name. See, if you have observed, everywhere I am giving, for every object, we are giving the company code name only, so that we can remember easily. Variant is equal to double three double six. Name is equal to posting body variant for double three double six. Name is equal to posting body variant for double three double six. Click on save. Then, see the step number 4.2. Assign posting period variant to company code. Path is same as above. And the transaction code is not there. Please add the transaction code again. OBBP. OBBP. Path is same as above means you have to click on back arrow till you reach IMG screen. See, assign variance to company code. Click on position. So, position button is very similar to search button. Click on position. Company code is 3366. Company code is equal 3366. Click on enter. Variant is equal to 3366. Our company code has been taken in the first line and again at the against that variant is equal to 3366. Click on save. So we defined one variant and we have assigned this variant to the company code. Now we have to open the periods for the company code for the post period variant. We have to open the periods for the posting period variant. <coughs> I'm sorry. See the step number 4.3. Open and close posting periods. Path is same as above. Transaction code OB52. 
ट्रांसक्शन कोड वो भी फिफ्टी टू सो क्लिक ऑन बैक एरो टिल यू रीच आई एम दिस स्क्रीन वेन ओवर यू सी पाथ इज सेम एज अबो यू हैव टू क्लिक ऑन बैक एरो सॉरी वन सेकेंड I'm sorry. So open and close posting periods. Click on new entries. Variant is equal to double three double six. Variant is equal to double three double six. Here, look at the stream, please. A for account type. A for account type. Account type is equal to plus. So, what is the account type? Please go back to notes. Put heading account types. <coughs> Put heading account types. The account types describe the account types describe the nature of accounts. The nature of accounts in SAP. The account types, the account types were already defined in the system. The account types were already defined in the system. We cannot define. our own account types we cannot define our own account types the following are the account types the following are the account types defined in the system Number one, GL accounts. Number one, GL accounts. Within brackets, yes. So the GL account type is represented with the letter yes. Number two, vendor accounts. Within brackets, K. Number three, customer accounts. Within brackets, D. Number four, asset accounts. Within brackets, A. <coughs> Number five. Material accounts within bracket CM. So here, these are the account types which were already defined in the system. So each account type is identified with one letter. We cannot change them. Now, here we have to enter the account type. Means to which account type you want to apply this posting pretty variant. Means if you want to apply this posting pretty variant. Only for GL accounts, you enter yes. If you want to apply this postured variant only for vendor accounts, you enter K. Means you have this facility, you have the facility to open different periods for different account types. That facility is available, but generally we open the same period for all account types. In order to specify that, we enter plus. So account type is equal to plus. 
within brackets please write down within the account type is equal to plus within brackets please write down plus indicates that <coughs> plus indicates that the posting body variant plus indicates that the posting body variant is applicable to <coughs> i'm sorry for the today the posting body variant is applicable to all account types now here we have the two types of periods normal posting periods and special posting periods so we have to open the normal periods and special periods separately so first we have to open normal periods to open the normal periods from period 1 is equal to 1 first to write down i'll explain from period 1 is equal to 1 year is equal to 2017 to period 12 year is 2017 see this is called range of periods i told you, you know the periods are opened by specifying the range here we have opened from first period of fiscal year 2017 to 12th period of fiscal year 2017 so in our example we have opened all the 12 normal periods but how to open specific periods i will show you now first let us open special periods again in order to open the special periods from period 2 is equal to 13 year is equal to 2017 year is equal to 2017 and don't give the year 2018 if you give the year 2018 they open January 2019 so fiscal year only we have to enter and these special periods are related to fiscal year 2017 2 period 16 year 2017 click on save and enter now so in our training class we have opened all the 12 normal periods and 4 special periods but how to open only the current period very simple just look at the screen Current period is October means 10th period, right? So from period 10, year 2017 to period 10, that's it. 10 to 10. Click on save. Suppose if you want to open July, June, July, August, September, October, right? So July means 7th period, right? In that case, you enter from period 7. From period 7, year 2017 to period 10 means 7 to 10. That is 4 periods are open. Click on save. Okay, fine. We have opened only the current period. Right? Now, October is over. Then, November comes. In order to enable the users to post the transactions in the November, the November period is to be opened. So, unless you open the November period, nobody will be able to post the transaction in the month of November. So, at the end of every month, we perform some activities in accounting. And these activities are called month-end activities. As a part of month end activities, we open the next period. So when the November comes, on the 31st October 2017, once the month end activities are over, right, we come to the same screen. We enter the period number 11, year 2017, to period 11. That's it. Then only November is opened. So when you open the current month, when you open the current period, yeah, yes, Teja. See, I will come to that point. Uh, when you open the current period, the previous period is automatically closed. When you open the current period, the previous period is automatically closed. We need not do any separate activity to close the periods. So in our class, I am opening all the 12 periods. Click on save. <coughs> now, here you have from account and to account. Means we have the facility to open the separate periods for separate accounts also. But generally, right, we don't use it. But you have the facility to, you, to open the separate periods for separate accounts also. 
because here you are the from account number and to account number. Now, okay, Teja. So if you don't give any account numbers, it is applicable to all the account, all the accounts. Now, here one more thing is, I told you that every month the new period is to be opened. To open the new period, right? We have to the user has to come to the same screen. Okay. So from where did you come to this screen? Just let us go back. One second. Let me check whether we have to save it or not. Okay. So to open the periods, you have to come to the same screen, right? So to this screen, you came from IMG screen. And I told you that IMG screen is always given access to consultants only. End users will not have the access to IMG screen. In that case, how the end user can open the periods? For opening the periods, again, you have to take the help of consultant. Right? To be, to be speaking technically at this point of time, right? But that is not necessary. In order to open the periods for the same screen, the path is also available from SAP Easy Access. This is called user level maintenance of posting periods. Put heading in the notes, please. At the end of every month, uh, do one thing. Heading is heading is user level maintenance of posting periods. User level maintenance of posting periods. At the end of every month. At the end of every month, the user has to open the periods. The user has to open the periods. For this, path is also available. For this path is also available from SAP Easy Access. From SAP Easy Access screen. This is called. This is called. User level maintenance of. This is called user level maintenance of posting periods. Path. Path. SAP Easy Access screen. Path. SAP Easy Access screen. Accounting. Accounting. Financial accounting, general ledger, general ledger, environment, current settings, environment, current settings. Open and close posting periods. Open and close posting periods. Open and close posting periods. Transaction code. Yes underscore. ALR underscore. 8700. 3642. Yes, underscore, ALR, underscore, 8700, 3642. See, you came to the same screen. Click on position. Continue, please. Click on position.
posting period variant is equal to double three double six. Click on position. Posting period variant is equal to double three double six. Click on enter. Look at the screen, please. Click on enter. Look at the screen. Here, our posting period variant has been taken in the first line. Right? Change the periods as necessary. Change the periods as necessary. And click on save. So in our training class, we have the number of variants, right? Because number of students are there in the server and they are doing the practice. But in the real time, we have only one variant according to your company code only. Now, the next one is creation of number ranges for document types. This we'll see tomorrow. So this topic will straight away takes 45 minutes to explain you, right? That's why we will look into this topic in tomorrow's class. Akila, you have any questions today? Okay. Anil. Anil. Okay. Ash, do you have any questions in today's class? And one more thing, Ash and Roni, right? Once you register yourself, I will send the recording into the previous class. Chandrasekhar, can you please mute yourself? When now your turn comes, you can unmute yourself and you can ask me your doubts. Yeah. So, till now, our morning batch, no? So, no, not this one. Daily morning batch. See, till now, six classes are over. Right? So, once you register yourself, I will send the recordings of the six classes okay and today is the seventh class <clears throat> then chandrasekhar you have any doubts yes sir uh, today class there is no doubt mm -hmm. but for fiscal year i have sent a mail and for okay. how to use on no, the common chat of record sorry how to use Common chart of records for two company codes. See here, for example, yesterday we have defined our chart of accounts double three double four, right? Yes, sir. Double three double six. In the assigned company code to chart of accounts screen, right? We have assigned. I have. One second. We have assigned to our company code double three double six chart of accounts. Suppose, for example, double four double five is also your company code, right? Against this, we assign double three double six chart of accounts, and double four five six is also your chart, your company code. And if you want to use the same chart of accounts for that company code also, we assign double three double six like that. If you want to use the same chart of accounts for the multiple company codes, for against those multiple company codes, we have seen the double three double six in this particular screen. I have done this, sir. Assignment uh, SU01 and SU02 is uh, two company codes. SU01 and SU02, huh? Yes. One is. Uh... Yeah. I have assigned here my chart of accounts SU01 to consultants and communications. Okay. Here I have a doubt. Consultants is different line of activity and communications is different line of activities. Yes. In that case, a GLs varies, no? That's why. How to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. We cannot use the two chart of accounts for the, uh, in that case, we cannot use the same chart of accounts to these company codes. Communications uh, have to uh, have its own you, chart of accounts uh, and the consultants has to have its own chart of accounts. Yes. Uh, so, can you give me one example where we can use the same chart of accounts for both uh, multiple company codes? For example, 
you are in textiles manufacturing, right? Let us say Surya Textiles Industries Limited. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. So Surya, yes, textiles, sir. Surya Textiles Industries Limited is your company, right? Now, your yes, turnover has been increasing like anything, and you have been earning no more huge profits on which you have to pay lot of income tax. Now, your tax planning team yes. came into picture. They said, sir, in order to avoid huge imposition of income tax, right, let us divide the present entity into another entity. Then you have created another company code. I mean, you have formed another legal entity under the Indian Companies Act, Surya Vamshi Textiles Limited. Surya Textiles Limited is also oh, yours. Yes. Surya Vamshi Textiles Limited is also yes. yours. And the nature of business is same. In that case, same. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes. In that case, they can use the same terms. Okay, sir. Thank you. And uh, uh, fiscal, yes, sir. One more question. Hmm. Uh, if I if I start in my company in the month of January, hmm. either I can uh, show as a closing year in the month of March yes. or I can carry out to next year and show for 15 months as exactly. the end of the year. Exactly. Now, now I'm closing my business in the month of July. Okay. So April, May, June, July, I have conducted my business. Okay. Now I'm close. I am winding up my company. Yes. In that case, how to then will be July? In that case, we have to define one shortened fiscal year, right? We have to define one shortened fiscal year. So this is called year dependent fiscal year. So the shortened fiscal year and year dependent fiscal years we did not cover till now. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sorry. So no problem, no problem, Chandrasekhar. So we cover later. We we do have the topic on shortened fiscal year and uh, year dependent fiscal year. Yes. Also, yes, I did not tell you how to create our own fiscal year variant. So these the, the uh, two topics are to be covered later. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Then Gadi, you have any questions? Yes, sir. I have a question. Tell me. Uh, same. Uh, here only chart of accounts and uh, special. I mean, this country specific chart of accounts. Sir, actually, in chart of accounts, we have hundred GL accounts. Okay. Okay. And country specific chart of accounts, we have hundred and two chart of account. I mean, GL accounts. Yes. For the same company code, we have assigned both. Because we are running a yes. business in other country also. Yes. yes. For that we are we are supposed to give a report. Yeah. So how that that chart of I mean we we post only transaction in chart of accounts. Yes. We will not post any transactions in uh, uh, country. country specific. Yes. Okay. How that will pick? See, I am taking it another company code, right? Suppose we have a GL account 1,520. So for others, it will come later on, right? See, in the control data tab, right? I think you know there are two segments in the chart of in the there are two segments in the GL account. Company code segment and chart of account segment. So in the company code segment, we have an alternate account number field. So this is the GL account in the operational chart of accounts. So the GL account in the operational chart of accounts will be linked with the GL account in the country specific chart of accounts. So multiple GL accounts of the operational chart of accounts can be linked with the single GL account in the country specific chart of accounts. In that case, even though the number of GL accounts in two chart of accounts are different, there is no any issue. And again, we will discuss this elaboratedly at the time of creating our GL account master. Okay, sir. 
and yeah. one more question sir yeah uh, in today's class mm. you have uh, edited that period okay in the current uh, period itself yeah is it possible or we have to define one more we have to open one more period apart from that no no, no. every month no 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 every month you can edit the period it's not okay. necessary you can just every month every month is not necessary okay. every single unit every month you can edit the period for the this unit okay sir. thank you then hema sailaja any question then manoj i'm fine okay thanks roni okay gadi roni okay roni you want to continue in this batch you have to confirm it ha huh? okay then then srinivas any questions yes sir no okay okay sunil tafik okay teja teja okay then okay ashu i think you are also fine with this okay okay then see you tomorrow same time good night and good day thank you sir you're welcome thank you